today on Blessed Barbecue. I'm going to be answering some questions that you guys had regarding using a blend of 50% wood chips and 50% pellets in the pellet cooker. Let's get going. I recently did a video where I used 50% wood chips and 50% pellets in my Lone Star Grills pellet smoker and video generated a good amount of interest and also a lot of questions regarding this technique. So I'm gonna answer all those questions that you guys posted, thank you for that by the way, in this video. One of the questions was pellet consumption, pellet wood chip consumption, um, how long you know, is this hopper full of wood chips and pellets lasting during the cook? I started this smoker up with a full hopper of a 50% blend of wood chips and pellets and I'm going to show you what the hopper looks like afterwards. Just so you know, what I'm cooking today is a rack of um, beef short ribs. Uh, to be honest with you, I'm not real thrilled. It's kind of a thin, you know, it's got one really good bone, but the other two are eh. Uh, regardless of how long this takes, which usually is about, you know, five to six hours, I'll be burning this uh, batch of pellets here, wood chips, for seven hours. So I'll show you what the hopper looks like at the end of the cook. Once it's cooled down, I'm gonna peel everything open, show you uh, the ash accumulation and the fire pot. I'm gonna show you what everything looks like. And we're also gonna talk about the, the flavor of the meat a little bit more than I did in the other video. And um, the, the, the smoky smell and everything. We're gonna cover all the questions you guys had. Um, but anyway, I started this cook or I started this cooker up at 745 this morning it is currently 19 it just turned 8 19 in the morning and again I'm going to be do, uh, burning this for a total of seven hours after I get these ribs on um, I did completely clean the barrel or the belly of this cooker out I uh, completely cleaned out the fire pot and there are uh, pellets when I started it up I, I took video of this the um, the chute leading down to the fire pot from the hopper was loaded with and you can see it very clearly pellets and wood chips so uh, one thing i will say that i noticed uh, from the last cook was the ash being generated is definitely not as light as just pellets alone where you know i've owned a total of eight pellet cookers and you guys will see, it happens with all of them, you'll open up the, the cooking chamber door and there you'll see, you know, pellet kind of ash kind of blowing about. And I didn't really see that with using the blend here. So without any further ado, let's get this cook rolling. So again, I'm just a little disappointed with uh, this rack, but it's really all of that my butcher had. This is the best of the worst, I guess. My plan for this cook, again, is I'm gonna cook the ribs until they're done, and I'll give you guys a good shot of any smoke ring that may be there. I'll describe the flavor, des describe the smoky smell that I smell. <laughs> um, and But this is not any type of tutorial on how to cook beef short ribs. I have plenty of videos on cooking beef short ribs on my channel. We're focusing more on this technique of blending wood chips with pellets. And again, I, I did a disclaimer on my last video. I will say this. Uh, the owner of Lone Star Grills, his name is Chris. He was working with a wood provider who helped him dial in the chip size, the chips that worked best with the LSG. Reminder, the LSG does have a... Uh, short auger and it's built like a tank so i'm not making any guarantees that this will work with all pellet cookers but um, i am guaranteeing it works with this one behind me here uh, but again if you want to you know experiment with this it's kind of at your own risk i just i just don't want anybody mad at me because of my videos using this technique let me show you what these chips look like so here are the wood chips these come from lsg and I have a dime here for scale, you know, 10 cent piece. And you can see wood chips aren't much bigger than a dime. And that's a good example here. Some are much smaller. But 
one thing I notice is they are, you know, they're pretty thick, about eighth of an inch thick, and you know, they're averaging usually around uh, one half of an inch, half an inch wide. This one here is a little longer than half an inch. But your wood chips are key to having success with this technique. Um, I definitely would not recommend just buying a bag of wood chips, you know, off the shelf and trying it with this. Uh, again, Chris worked diligently with different size wood chips until they dialed this in. And these are pretty small. I mean, they're definitely not clogging the auger of this cooker. And, um, but again, <laughs> I'm not making any guarantees, but I'm interested in hearing the experience of others who have different brands of cookers if they do try this. I've had questions on the smoke. I did show the smoke stack in the last video, but I'm gonna show it with a black background just so you can see the kind of smoke we're getting burning pellets and wood chips. All right, so as you can see, very translucent blue smoke. This is what you want to see when you're smoking on any cooker here. And there it is with the black shade behind it. Hoping you guys can see just a nice, beautiful, clear blue smoke. So for now, that's really all I can think of. Uh, temperature has been running the same consistency as this cooker is programmed to run. So I haven't seen a difference with that. Um, but I will say that that last cook I did, I definitely noticed um, more of that kind of offset flavor. This will be cool because the last cook I did was, you know, it was a reverse sear. This is actually going to be a barbecue. You know, I, I'm smoking this meat until, until it's probe tender. But again, I'm going to reiterate, regardless of how long this rack takes, I will be burning this thing for seven hours. Okay, we are two hours into the actual cook and the pit has been running for two hours and 25 minutes. So I'm gonna give you a quick look at the meat, see what, how we're coming along here. You can see we're getting some really gorgeous color here. I am going to spritz it after I'm done talking to you guys. <laughs> now I'll give you a peek at the hopper, let you see how we're coming along as far as consumption. Excuse my shaking. Yeah, so level it out. Hopefully that gives you a fairly decent picture. It looks like it's about, I don't know, three inches lower than it was when we started. All right, so I'll give you guys a look at the meat in another couple hours. I was going through my comments uh, a little while ago and I noticed Russell was interested in seeing what the consumption would be like on an eight to 10 hour cook. Now, earlier in the video, I said I was going to allow regardless of when the ribs were finished. I was going to allow the pit to run for seven hours. I'm upping it to eight hours. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you guys in a bit. We're at four hours now. Let's take a look at the meat and the hopper. So the meat's looking absolutely epic. It's got a killer color. Getting a good amount of pullback. I'm gonna go ahead and just see where we're at as far as to give it a little longer before we pull it. As far as the hoppers are concerned, here's what we're looking like. Let's level it out. And we're looking at about four inches. To me, it's looking like the fuel consumption isn't that bad. Uh, one thing I have noticed is that the temperature range is staying nice and stable. The amount of smoke has been nice and stable. Um, the meat's looking killer, so I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, it's definitely not done yet. I, I'm thinking another 45 minutes to an hour, and it'll be tender enough to pull. Actually, it's looking a lot better than I was expecting, too, because that one side was so thin. But we'll see when it's done. We are now at five hours. Let's check these ribs out. I have a feeling they're going to be done. So they look really good. Nice pullback. Let's go ahead and check these out for tenderness. Definitely tender. Look at that. And now for the hopper here. I'm gonna level it off. All right, from where it started, 
It's about four and a half. Only dropped a half an inch from when we saw it last. I'm going to continue running this cooker for three more hours so we can get a good picture of what the interior of the cooking chamber looks like, the, the fire pot looks like, and also the total pellet consumption, pellet wood chip consumption for a longer cook, which will total eight hours, actually uh, eight hours, 25 minutes. And also remember that initial startup, it's dumping more pellets to, you know, for the preheat. So um, I don't know if we could count that, but I am. So it's going to be a total of eight hours, 25 minutes by the time we uh, get into this. Then, of course, I need to let it go through a cool down mode. So I will uh, see you. I'm going to allow the ribs to rest a bit and then we'll take a look at that. Finish that part of the Q&A, I guess. What, you know, how the food differs from just pellets alone. I'm very optimistic just looking at the outside of this and smelling the smoke. So see you guys when this is all rested up. All right, these ribs are rested and the smell alone. I mean, pretty excited about this. See that? Normally, you know, I want a four bone rack when I buy beef ribs, when, you know, these plate ribs. These are actually, I almost feel bad. I was kind of talking bad about these ribs because they actually finished way better than I was expecting. Look at that. And packed with juice. I want you to take a really good look at that smoke ring. This is, even this, this janky one, <laughs> there's still a decent amount of meat on there. Uh, one of these I'm saving for my son. My son just got over being very, very sick and uh, trying to pack some meat on his bones. So I'm going to take it off this janky piece because I'm a nice dad. Mm. I use Plowboy's rub um, topped with SNS Grills Rocky's rub. I mean, I don't know, maybe I'm biased, maybe I'm just very optimistic, maybe I'm excited, but to me, I'm noticing a distinct difference from just pellets. I, I, I honestly am. So this part of the q and had a lot of people asking, because I didn't really cover the meat as much as they wanted to. Hopefully this answers your questions there. Still have a few hours to go on the, the burn. So bear with me and I'll get all those answers, questions answered. <laughs> see, see you guys in a bit. All right, it is exactly five hours since you guys last saw me, which means eight hours since I started that rib cook and closer to eight and a half hours since I turned this uh, smoker on. We're gonna shut her down now. Before I shut it down, I do want to say that this entire time, I mean, we've been getting great looking smoke and the temperature has been running solid. So we're going to shut it down and it is now going to go into its cool down mode. So obviously I am going to allow this thing to cool down. I, I don't necessarily mean completely, but until I can safely start pulling things off of it, like the cooking grate and everything, so once, it, once it's cooled down, um, I'm going to show you guys everything that you've been asking me to show you as far as the cooking chamber, um, the amount of pellets and wood chips that are left, the fire pot. I'll pull out the diffuser and show you uh, the uh, belly to let you see how much ash is in there and everything. So see you. Hopefully it won't take too long to cool down. All right, the pit is cooled down. And what I want to show you first is just the inside of the cooker. You don't see a bunch of ash or anything on the grate. Let me pull the grate out. So I've removed the uh, heat deflector 
And here's what we got going on as far as ash inside the actual belly of the cooker. It's about what I would expect from a um, from pellet grill, but I mean a regular <laughs> burning pellets. But it's pretty fine, and you can see small, you know, sticks in there. Not sticks, but little like fibers of wood. Got the fire, um, the uh, burn pot pulled out already. I'll show you that. And here's that diffuser plate. There's nothing, no dust up on the diffuser plate. If we pull back the slide though that, that covers the vents, you can see, you know, what's kicked up there. But again, no problems. And last but not least, here's the burn pot. You can see there, there is a few little bits of like partially burned pellets and little pieces of the wood chips. Here's a view of where the ash actually goes from, you know, drops down from that burn pot. Let's see, a few little droppings again, mostly ash with a few bits of little pieces of wood burnt pellets. Here's what we have. So that's the contents of the entire, uh, you know, that it that did. This is the ash and bits that did not end up in the belly of the of the smoker. The ash does seem a little bit like uh, less coarse, I guess, and gritty that you get typically with a pellet smoker. And yeah, just some few little teeny bits of wood. Interesting. Okay, the pit is all cooled down and here are the chips. Let me level this out. Sorry for the shaking camera, I'm doing this by hand. And so it looks like a total for this cook for eight and a half hours, it went down about seven and a half, about seven inches. So I think I covered everything that you guys were asking. If I've forgotten anything, let me know. Or if you want to see something else, let me know. Um, I will say this, uh, this, you know, method of mixing the chips with the pellets, it was kind of conceived by LSG for their cooker. Having done the two cooks, especially this last cook, you know, which was, you know, low and slow. Um, I'm not going back to just 100% pellets. Uh, I can tell you that flat out. I'm always gonna have uh, a blend of wood chips in the hopper here. So, that being said, I appreciate you stopping by. If you're not subscribed, please do. Uh, make sure you ring the notification bell, thumb up the video, and I'll see you in the next video. Keep those suggestions coming in.